With its relatively mild climate and natural grasslands, sheep have been part of the landscape around rugby in New South Wales since the early days of Australia's fine wool industry. But after six generations as merino wool producers, Peter Kelly has changed his family's narrower pastoral to a meat operation. His 3,100 first cross ewes still have to be shorn, but at an average fibre width of 28 microns, their wool is classed as coarse and low value. Wool's more of a secondary product for us, but it, you know, it comes with the animals. It's still beneficial, we feel, growing sheep that you can shear, because the last few years it's definitely been worthwhile, but it is, our main income is out of the, the second cross lamb. Last year, Peter Kelly's wool clip averaged just $4.80 a kilogram. Bellies and stained scraps were worth much less. But it's exactly the sort of unwanted wool that Peter Hofbauer is looking for. Well, last year for these stained pieces, we got about 130 cents um, greasy and the bellies was about uh, three, 300 cents greasy, so... What's it running at this year, yeah? Yeah, about half of that this year, I reckon. Well, that's really good because that's very competitive uh, price and that's what we're looking at, so that's fantastic pricing. So I'm sure we're going to be a customer. Peter Hofbauer is chairman of Planet Protector Packaging, a company turning low-grade wool into high-value insulated packaging. These are ideal because they're the type of sheep that they are and the type of wool is, is good for insulation. It, it's quite a thick and uh, wiry type of, uh, of wool. The company's wool pack is helping transport cold chain products such as meat, seafood and pharmaceuticals. And it's used extensively in the food, meal kits, pet food, chocolates, wine, confectionery, so many things. And a big growing sector is the pharmaceutical sector. Things like cosmeceuticals, nutraceuticals, probiotics. So we ship everything from chemotherapy to chocolate. Ram. Have we got the order for Vic's Meats ready to yeah, go? Yeah, it is. We've got their order ready. They've yeah. just called. They're on their way. Yeah, yeah, sure. According to CEO Joanne Howarth, the market is crying out for alternatives to plastic and polystyrene. Polystyrene is one of the most problematic plastics. The small microbeads break down and they're ingested by marine life. They find their way into oceans and waterways and they move up the food chain. They threaten biodiversity and increasingly they're a threat to human health. One of the business's clients is the health supplements company Blackmores. At its Western Sydney warehouse, more than 9,000 lines are packed every day. About 1,000 of them are temperature-sensitive bioceuticals. The felt packaging can keep products to below 8 degrees and replaces plastic eskies. It actually exceeded our expectations as far as its performance goes and that's important as well because if we're wasting orders because we have to replace the order because it didn't maintain that temperature or because we had product breakages because we send a lot of glass out from here, um, that actually would double the emissions uh, footprint of our products going out. It would double our waste and it also doubles our cost. At Nanup in the southwest of WA, Tom Wilde makes award-winning cheeses from his flock of mostly East Frisian dairy sheep. They also have to be shorn every year, but it's a net cost to his bottom line. So it's probably about 33, 34 micron. Um, so low quality carpet spec wool. We're in the market for milk, not wool. So it actually costs us money to shear these sheep. So yeah, if someone else can, can make a go of it, we'd be happy for that, uh, another industry, for sure. Two years ago, he sold his entire clip to Rama's Bullis, a chemist inventor who has discovered how to convert low-grade wool 
into high-value amino acids. So amino acids, they're the building blocks of life. They are um, obviously has a, a huge role in uh, nutrition. Uh, so there is applications in food supplements, um, nutraceuticals. There is also applications in cosmetic products, uh, pharmaceuticals. And uh, obviously we've developed the world's first liquid uh, fertilizer and soil improver uh, from low-grade wool. His first commercial product is a liquid fertiliser now selling in 40 outlets. Nanup-based nurseryman Phil Hewitt likes the product so much he's invested in the company. Well, I find it very effective. It's not to say that the other products don't work, but I found that the Very Grow product is much, much better over a wider range of products. It's good for everything that basically uh, grows, you know, lawns, natives. And I think that's a bit unusual too, to have a liquid fertiliser that also suits natives. So I use it on absolutely everything in the nursery. I use it on my fruit trees that I sell. And again, it's to get the tree looking in the best condition for sale. It's still a one-man operation, but Rama's Bullis hopes a planned listing on the stock exchange will raise up to half a million dollars to expand his Perth-based business. On a day-to-day -day basis, I do the actual manufacturing myself. I uh, also do the labelling, I do the deliveries, and um, I also have to attend to all the other corporate side, side of um, the company, in addition to all the logistics and um, the admin work. So part of the listing will help us with raising capital to really, you know, bring on um, manpower to take this to the next level. Rama's Bullers came to Australia in 1999 as a 16-year-old humanitarian refugee. One step ahead of Sudan's civil war, thousands of young schoolchildren are on the move. He'd fled Sudan, where his family faced persecution as ethnic Egyptian Coptics. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty, no safety. There was the war happening between the north and the south. Um, people were just being dragged to um, in big trucks and taken to the war zone. Ramaz Boulos previously discovered a new class of antibiotics to treat so-called superbugs. It's still in development, and he now wants to produce a range of products from his wool processing, creating jobs and opportunities in his adopted country. It's been the best thing that has happened to me. Coming to Australia, is uh, I found it's a place that has, um, has a very welcoming culture, has plenty of opportunities, is safe, um, there's freedom to do what you want and uh, the sky is the limit. You work hard then you get places. Planet Protector has relied on China to clean and process about 20 tonnes of Australian and New Zealand coarse wool each year. But the company has just won a near $5 million Commonwealth Government manufacturing grant to build its own processing facility in New South Wales. We've had terrible disruptions to our supply chain out of China, exorbitant freight increases, delays. You know, it's been very, very challenging during COVID, but the world is our oyster. If we've got state-of-the-art manufacturing facility here, we can produce for the whole of Australia, no problems. Australia's current processing capacity is geared towards fine wool production. The company wants to build a facility focused on cleaning and processing coarse wool and is confident it can raise another $5 million in crowdfunding. We've got our sights firmly set on expansion into Southeast Asia early next year. It's consumers who are driving this change now and businesses are increasingly concerned about their environmental, their social governance, and they're wanting to make the change. <laughs>